Welcome back to our continuing adventures, this time back on the Let's Defend platform. They have released a new DFIR exercise called Email Analysis. Uh, let's see, so we're given an email and the attachment as separate downloads. You recently received an email from someone trying to impersonate a company. Your job is to analyze the email to see if it's suspicious. And then we're given what? One, two, three, four. Oh, it's ten or less questions since they're not numbered, but that's fine. <clears throat> and so effectively what we are looking at. I have gone through and it's a little bit of pre-game. Downloaded the files. Hash them out and basically dump them into VT to start. The email itself does not have anything there. Again, all the concept behind this if this were the real world not a simulation aspect you wouldn't just go uploading every little thing willy-nilly to virus total as okay assume this was a false positive this was actually a perfectly fine email maybe it contained attachments that would tax documents sensitive information that type of stuff you've effectively just now made it public to anybody that it would have a paid for license for virus total but given the fact that this is an exercise, I'm just trying to do a few shortcuts to make life just a little bit easier. So just keep that in mind when using any of the sandboxing or analysis systems. So virus total, any.run, um, hybrid analysis, triage, whatever the case would be. And then the attachment definitely comes back as looking mighty malicious. With what? Say 80% detection rate for uh, AV engines? Is everything being unsafe? Oh. Trojan... See if anything here stands out as something that file infector inject malicious behavior, blah blah blah. Uh, and then we end up with VM ray. Okay. But well, it definitely looks malicious. It stinks. But let's take a look at the email as the first question that we have to go through and perform an answer for is the sending email address. So let me get my sandboxed Thunderbird. And here it is. So from Yang Ting. United.com.sg, which is, what, Singapore? I think. <clears throat> Without looking. Uh, let's see. Forward. Swift payment copy. Incorrect date. Bank details provided. United Scientific Equipment. Good morning. Last week received your performa invoice. Uh, Prepayment for order. While arranging payment, notice bank details different from your old one. And the invoice is attached. So this is sandboxy control, or at least it's named supposedly. Isn't there a section in here where it's typically like other things that it's known by? Yeah, United Scientific Equipment.exe. And when looking at it, it looks like a typical non-icon EXE. So the 
blue title with the white box on the inside. Okay. I mean, you think they would have gone through a little bit more effort to maybe try to do like a double, um, double icon or, or double extension. So United Scientific Equipment PDF EXE and try to change the icon to a what would look like a PDF to try to confuse somebody potentially. But oh, apparently I didn't do the transition. So there's the transition. Apologies. So here's the email, email that we're looking at. And then it obviously would have the attachment that's been just put off into a separate download for this particular aspect. So the question would be, why would... I mean, is united.com.sg an actual legitimate thing? I guess that's what we kind of need to figure out. So now I have to remember inside of show me all the headers. So we get the message ID, we get the return path it does go to united.com.sg. It is going to admin at malware dash traffic dash analysis.net, which I'm sure most of this stuff has been rewritten. Oh, Singapore. Original HTML, and if we just pull up the source. Does it bother to give us... It does return. Okay. Um, source of make visible. Let me move these around. <clears throat> so let's see. We take this. We move this over here. Oh, God. That's, um... Text size. Oh, good. We can do the same aspect for the control plus. Try to make it a little bit easier to read here. And then I need to extend this out a bit. I know you guys can't see it. I am working on it. Okay. And we do a transition. So here's the whole aspect. Kind of gives us the same exact aspect as before. So we're getting confirmation, at least from the header that's up top. So it does look like, effectively, we can just put down Yang Ting. What I was hoping to see would have been like a sending IP address in the header space. And we could have worked that back against to see as to whether or not if united.com.sg has like a SPF record, DKIM, DMARC, something else we can go through and kind of vet that this is an authorized sender on behalf of. Uh, but unfortunately, that doesn't look like that's the case in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down, and then we are going to make the attempt at Yang Ting. Correct. Okay, so at least as far as this particular exercise goes, that is apparently where it's supposed to be. And uh, what is the email address of the recipient? And that was the admin at malware-traffic-analysis.net. It is pulled from both the source and the email itself, just looking at it. And the subject of... Okay. That, that again was blatantly apparent in both header and the particular aspect. United Scientific Equipment. Space in between, all lowercase. date that it was sent. Again, another particular aspect that is visible inside of there. February 8th, 2021. 
So we will have to be mindful of rewriting the date. So it's going to be 02 dash or slash 03 slash 2021. So 02 slash 0, 03 or 08? 08. 2021. Done. What is the originating IP? Oh. Okay, let me. Oh. Okay, hang on there. Whoa, buddy, whoa. 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 Okay. <laughs> It is in there. Just had to look a little bit. 71, 19, 248, 52. Now again, this is, should be visible if you're using Outlook. I would assume Outlook Express or Windows Mail to an aspect. Obviously, how you're gonna get there is gonna be different. Um, I typically just use Thunderbird for these particular exercises because it's usually fairly simple to get the stuff going and I know I can sandbox it without too much in the line of problems. It's also not set up to any sort of uh, email account, so in the event I don't have to worry about some crap getting on the box saying, hey, this Thunderbird session is valid, I'm just going to go ahead and start shooting out crap. But so there we go. Because up is unknown. So typically this would be something we would kind of take back and see as to whether or not this would be an authorized sender for. United. So let's go ahead and let's just bring up Telos. And then we're going to do MX Toolbox. So our aspect is we want to take a look. Yes, I realize you can't see. Let me transition this back over. So we want united.com.sg to get some sort of intel there. We're going to take a look and see where that says this stuff's supposed to go. And if, so for example, we want to take a look at SPF record. So we want United, assuming I, you can spell it correctly, united.com.sg. Let's just take another close look to make sure. UNITED.com.sg. Okay. And then we're not technically looking for an MX record, we're looking more for a SPF record. Which tells us that. Everything we would include would be a se dot m s c h also m s c hosting dot com. And now, of course, we come into the whole aspect of now we're going to go down this rabbit hole because now we want to take a look at the SPF record to see as to what if this is something that that allows. Which down just includes all that. And the IP we are looking for is in the 71. So this apparently comes from Canada. Argo.centos.mx. Oh, in the general range. So we're looking for 7119 for something to be visible there. That's for hosting one, and those are all 103s. So we'll take a look at number two. Those are all 110s. 
take a look at number three. And those come back all as one tens. How about number four? We got a 72. We're looking for 71. That was the button now. That was number four. Number five. All 72s. Again, we're looking for 71. And let's grab number six and take a look at that. 72s. So it is not inside the SPF record. So what country is it from? Well, if we can believe it, Canada. What is the name of the attachment when you unzip it? Ah. United Scientific Equipment. Oh. Apologies. I don't have this blown up as much as everything else. Oh, that one automatically did. Hooray. And we want the hash of the file, which is presented in the virus total page. And of course, now the, the big thing. Is the attachment malicious? Okay, I want to know, what is... The coverage percentage. Oh, about eighty one and a half percent. I mean, it could be a false positive, but let's put everything together. Let's let's ignore the um. 81.5% rounding up um, percent of AV engines on virus total that find this malicious. We have, at least unbeknownst to me, we've received a unexpected email claiming that our bank details were incorrect. They've given us a Password protected zip file that when we extract gives us an executable that, per the email, says should be an invoice. Now, unless there's some sort of like super advanced um, security that goes on in terms of, okay, even the invoices are encrypted when they're attached and you've got to go through and have something, something you know, extracted. You would think there would be a notice, though, in the email for that, saying, hey, you know, out of an abundance of caution, we make sure that, you know, all of our stuff is as secured as possible. So, you know, we're going to send you a separate email or a predefined uh, password for use of with your account. So that way nobody would be able to go through and grab your emails and potentially have the password to unencrypt all your invoices. That level of security is extremely, extremely rare. So we've got an order that we weren't really expecting. We have a supposed invoice that's an executable that now bringing into virus total has an 81 and a half rounded up um, detection rate. On top of that, we have a sending IP address that does not match any SPF record that we can reasonably chase down. It would be one thing if the SPF record wasn't in place at all, but there is a record in place. And following through, we don't see any mention of this, or it doesn't match anything that's in there. Add to the fact that this is Singapore, and apparently this email was supposedly sent from a Canadian IP. 
I mean, sure. Maybe they hired somebody to do marketing, something else along those lines. But this isn't marketing. This is supposedly an invoice. The other aspect that you could do is walk this back. I mean, if you've never had conversations with anybody at United Scientific Equipment, why would you get it now? I mean, even if we go with the assumption that the coworker was putting together this uh, order and the bank details were wrong, you would think that, okay, this stuff's going to go through, there's going to be a communication line, and it's going to be done in email. You would think that, okay, well, just in case I'm out of office, here's the other person that you can talk to in regards to it. And you would be CC'd into that email chain, but the situation doesn't talk about any of that. So this is a entirely unprompted and unexpected email to receive. Again, taking the 81 and a half rounded up detections or percentage of detections on virus total, the story smells. Even not taking in. No. Yeah, that way. <sighs> Which is weird because it's like, okay, this is left hand pointing right. But it's. <clears throat> screen. Maybe I should see about trying to flip it. Whatever. So effectively taking the virus total stuff out. None of this makes any sort of sense. So it's the same aspect in regards to, you know, Nigerian prince reaching out. Although I don't, th not entirely sure that uh, what is it, 419 scams are still as big of a thing. I'm going to show my age, that uh, out-of-state or out-of-country lotteries were another aspect. Um, if you don't remember ordering, you know, a uh, $7,000 iPad or Apple system with all the bells and whistles, and you've got an invoice showing up. Basically, it's the same exact aspect going through. At least this time, it wasn't a callback in terms of, hey... Yeah, uh, we we need you to, to call to get the bank details. Having this basically have just been spoofed and sent out. Of course, now the other aspect to take into consideration is that it is currently 2023. This email is dated 2021. SPF records can change. So hopefully you wouldn't be sitting there trying to work through all of this particular aspect for something that is roughly two years old. But if we suspend disbelief and just go with the assumption that this is a, a current email in the current year, well, we just did an SPF record check and none of that stuff matches. Added to the fact we're not expecting so everything all together now, including the virus total results for the executable invoice. This is obviously crap, bad, malicious. So. Yes. And just like that, we are done. <laughs> so it does not take as much on. It looks good that they've already got a couple of people that have gone through and put together analysis. Which, good. I know there's been a delay in terms of me getting to new content. Life is busy. Life is always busy. <laughs> but I'm trying to go through and make the appropriate time for in all the directions that I'm being pushed. Pulled? Tugged? 
directed. So that's done. I don't suppose that there was any new malware analysis exercises that have been put out. Browser extension. No. I don't know why DFIR doesn't bother to show the updated percentages for all this, because like all this is done. Yeah, whatever. Um, so there we go. That has been the DFIR email analysis exercise on the Let's Defend platform. This little guy, little guy right here. Hopefully the steps that I walked you through make sense. Questions, everything else like that. Hit me up on any of the available methods. I'm sure that there are more than enough, or more than enough other ways that you could go through. Um, it's like, yeah, so if we do header analysis while this is running, and since I haven't killed it, let's just, I'm going to go back over and I'm just going to grab the return path and all the rest of that stuff. And we're just going to dump that in. Now, again, this is from the header of the email when I view the source. So it was direct send, didn't go through anything else. And from all that particular aspect, it sees the domain in question does have SPF. And okay, so I guess we could have technically gone through and just done the super tool. And it would have told us, oh, yeah, this this doesn't this doesn't pass the smell test for SPF. But what if the super tool doesn't work? At least this way you can kind of you've seen a demonstration of using MX Toolbox to dig through and manually look for everything. It's always great when there's a tool that can do it for you, save time, everything else like that. But and so we've covered that particular aspect. If memory serves me right, too, I believe that there is a Google or a Gmail header analysis that will work for the same premise. Um, and I think it does the same type of checks, just not as detailed in the, or I should say, verbose in the output. There might even be a Microsoft one. But MX Toolbox is typically the, the go-to. So hopefully... If you have interest, you can sit there and kind of do the same exact thing for anything else that you might potentially receive. Although technically, I think, especially if you're using one of the online services, you know, Yahoo, Gmail, I believe that you can just pull up the header view inside of there and it will actually tell you in regards, uh, no, this SPF doesn't, you know, it's a fail. But, so, there we go. There's a particular aspect if you wanted to try to take the shortcut. Just use the built-in header analysis tool. And typically, obviously, for this particular portion, the redder the aspect, the worse it is. But that's kind of self-explanatory. Okay, there we go. With all that being said, I will see everybody in the next video.